but anyways, that that was a fun. I did a full few few years of the EWS when they still, when we would go to like Chile and, um, you know, we went to so many amazing places and it was such an adventure and oh, we raced. I mean, the racing times at the end of a week and you know, some it would add up to like an hour or more than an hour sometimes. So it was such good value and it was it was just the best times i loved it um yeah i i it obviously as the sport grew and there was more money involved it started it sort of as anything it became a lot more serious and the athletes took it more serious and then uh, i think they started GoProing all the runs and walking tracks and i think i was sat at the top of a stage one day and um no one was chatting everyone was just sat looking at their phones you know looking at their gopro for the upcoming run and that's when i kind of looked around and i was like you know what i think i think i'm done this is it this is this is this is not what like this is not how what i fell in love with and i think i've had enough of this and that was yeah so that was my last year of racing um that was when I was 40 years old. So, so that was like, and I would look at the start sheet and I'd be like, Oh my God, these girls, some of these girls could be like, I could be their mom, you know? And, and it was just time. I was, I didn't want to, I still enjoyed it, but I didn't want it. It was getting very serious. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to train like six hours a day. I didn't want to train like a cross country racer to do this anymore. Um, but, um, yeah, we had, we had really good times. <laughs> and um, it's quite interesting because obviously a lot of people on the podcast, are their goals have been to be number one in the world or they've become number one in the world. And and not everyone races with that goal. I mean, my early goals were definitely not that. I didn't wake up and think that's what I'm going to do. It was like a natural progression of results. And then, then you, you go better. But it sounded like you didn't race – for that entirely even throughout your career obviously results are important to keep sponsors and things like that but you kind of race for the joy of it you know and then that ironically was the top of the track going looking around you say well this is not my joy yeah when, yeah when you exactly. made, that, made that decision so was were you at peace with that decision at the yes. time and then how challenging was retiring and and focusing on something else well I mean, obviously, you you know, at, like I said, I had so many different chapters that sort of, sort of wound down and then picked up again. So it was it was it was just one of those. I was in one of those cycles again, and I think throughout my racing, because I never had goals of being a world champion, I always did lots of other things. Um, a lot of races and events I did for charity and worked with World Bicycle Relief or worked with kids. Um, or with other women so it didn't feel like just ending racing like EWS didn't feel like it was the end or I was retiring I knew I would still be involved in the sport in many other you know in different ways um, whether it be coaching or mentoring or being an ambassador for the brands and um, so it was it was just it was just a good time and it felt I felt ready for it. Um, I wanted to do other things. That's when I sort of got into like more like also bikepacking stuff and 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 just I was ready to do you know just to to try new disciplines again and and challenge myself in different ways. Um, but there's definitely a like you know I mean you you you're known as a racer and you worry about how that would affect your sponsorship and it becomes your identity that's how people know yes, you they know you definitely. you know um but i you know i guess luckily i i never you know it didn't define who i was um like my results or you know being a top racer didn't it wasn't it, it's there was more to it than just the results um and like you said i did get some i'm proud of like a lot of a lot of good results um and that did make you you know hungry for more but at the end of the day i would always try and look at the big picture of um 
when I when my racing career came to an end, like how can you give back? How can you how can you try and you know help other people get into it or give back to communities or people that you know haven't been as fortunate to to live a life like this or or inspire them to try and live a life like this? I think that's the that's the biggest thing. You know you. You know, from the outside in, you just see I've been racing for years and traveling and doing all these cool things, but there were so many sacrifices and so many crappy jobs that I did to do what, you know, to create this lifestyle. And um, and we just, you know, stuck with it. I mean, I I I lay underfloor heating and in houses and standard planks and worked at so many coffee in the shops. Early days. Yeah. In the early I, days, I remember and, you, uh, Sven, and you, and at the working at the yeah. bike shop as well that sponsored the team. Yeah, so you know, you you we did whatever work you could do for six months, and then you would put, you know, go racing for six months and put everything on the credit card, and then just pay it off. So, so it's you know, I, I feel a bit like these days, um, younger people expect everything to be given to them, and if it's not then they almost give up on their dreams, you know, instead of just um, going after it, whatever it takes. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's good. It, it feels good that that's how it, how it worked, you know. 